Chelsea News. Hey, what's poppin' people? How's it going? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today, man. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. I'm talking about two big stories today, and plus, I do want to give my thoughts at the end of the video of how I feel with Lampard in as manager at the moment because my feelings are fluctuating and changing a lot and although I'm not convinced he can be Chelsea manager, well I'm just going to talk and tell you how I feel at the end. Anyway, the two news stories I want to speak about today is Billy Gilmore's loan situation that gave me a heart attack as he's seemingly such an integral player to Chelsea's midfield. And a big story going around the rags is Ousmane Dembele, the French World Cup winner, only 23 years old. His contract ends at the end of next season, doesn't seem to be re-signing at the moment with Barcelona, and Chelsea are apparently interested. Big stories to crack into. Get comfortable, consider subscribing if you knew whichever side it is. Drop a like to show your support to me, that would be very kind. And let me tell you, this video is brought to you by One Football. Now, listen hard and make Make sure you do check out One Football by clicking the link in the top of the description because it's going to be a few days before I remind you about it. So, One Football is a totally free companion app that you can get on your smartphone or check out on the computer and give you alerts, statistics, fixtures, news, transfer news, lineups, everything you'll ever need regarding your favourite football team in the beautiful game. You can all get for completely free. I use it all the time, man, and you absolutely can too. Like I said, that. <laughs> buzzword it's free click the link in the top of the description to go check out one football now <laughs> all right then i'm feeling good i hope you are too my friends let's get into the first story of today's video now that of course is regarding young billy gilmore the scottish iniesta another really positive performance in chelsea's midfield in the cup on the weekend. To be honest, man, whenever Billy Gilmore plays, he always impresses. And I think, like, the percentage of games to man in the match awards is pretty darn high. Like, he's incredibly impressive. Superb in the midfield. He's dominating. He always looks forward. He's tenacious. He's, uh, he covers ground. And although he looks great next to Mason Mount in a two man midfield, which I'm sure we'll see again, in a lone pivot, he's excellent as well with two other eights either side of him. Personally, if you know me here on Football Therapy, you know that I've been calling out for him to play in the midfield as a starter at this point, at least while Kante is unsure in terms of his injury, because in terms of progressive thinking in that lone six, Billy Gilmore is probably better at that than N'Golo Kante. We all know what N'Golo Kante is, world-class, interceptive, box-to-box -box defensive midfielder. Billy Gilmore is sort of like, I don't know, a kind of hybrid of Jorginho and Kante, but he just, the way he always wants to play forward and play expansively in a team where we've got loads of attackers that perhaps aren't in high confidence, you really need a player like that in the midfield. Now, this story is coming from Frank Lampard's post match presser after Chelsea's win in the FA Cup. Um, Matt Law, the journalist of The Telegraph, posed a question to him saying, could Billy Gilmore still go on loan? Because you've said recently that he might go on loan and obviously he looks like he's playing well. Is he making this a difficult decision for you? And um, some sort of headline surfaced, Frank said, yeah, he might still go on loan. We're, we're seeing, we'll see what's gonna happen. But if you watch the actual press conference and sort of get the feel and the context of what he actually said, it was more a case of, yes, we we're leaving it open. The, the idea was maybe, but the fact how he's playing like this, like he's pretty much inferred that he's not going on loan because I can trust him. And when it comes to playing Billy Gilmore, I think Lampard's bottled it a little bit recently because <laughs> Frank Lampard got so much praise for playing these academy kids, for showing some bravery and belief in the youth. Especially last season when he put Billy Gilmore in against Liverpool and then Everton and he won man of the match in both games. It looked like a masterstroke from Frank Lampard and it looked like he really had the cojones to drop him in. But lately, he hasn't done that and that's arguably when he needs him most. Frank Lampard sort of panicked a little bit, relied on Jorginho and perhaps he should have gone for Billy Gilmore. I know being a coach is hard and you have to keep everyone happy. And personally, I'm by no means a Jorginho hater, which a lot of Chelsea fans are. I really like the guy, but in terms of this current dynamic in the midfield and in terms of their sample size of what they've both done when they're on the pitch, 
it has to be Billy Gilmore. He's been so, so impressive and he's never put a foot wrong. But ultimately, it's positive, I think. I don't think he will go on loan. So, <laughs> I'm not saying 100% he won't, but the general feeling is he won't. So Chelsea fans can rest easy and hopefully Frank Lampard plays him a little bit more. Right then, let's move on into the next story of today's video and talk about a French World Cup winner. That's right, Ousmane Dembele, 23 years old, plays for Barcelona as a winger. Like I said, won the World Cup. I believe he's got five um, Champions League goal involvements in four games this season. He's uh, coming back into form. Generally, he had a very, very difficult time. Uh, or he has had a very difficult time at Barcelona. Of course, he was bought from Dortmund after after one prolific season of assisting loads of goals. And then he went to Barcelona, he had loads of problems playing video games. I think he was one of these Fortnite players that just played loads of video games, turned up to training late, bad attitude. Of course, he's won the World Cup. Generally, we're recognized as a world-class potential winger. Of course, I remember it was against Conte's Chelsea when he hadn't scored, um, he hadn't scored for Barcelona at all. I think he scored his first goal for Barcelona against Chelsea in the Champions League, if memory serves. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section, but I believe, I, I still sort of seem to remember that pain. Anyway, the reports and rags are saying that he is reluctant to sign a new deal or there isn't a new deal signed yet, which is interesting because you think he's at the pinnacle at Barcelona at the moment, so why wouldn't you want to re-sign? I'm not entirely sure of the holdup of uh, of the situation with contract. I know they have huge financial troubles, Barcelona, so maybe they're trying to give him like reduced pay or something. Still, his contract runs out in at the end of next season and the likes of Manchester United and Chelsea Football Club are reportedly circling and expressing an interest. Now off the bat, both Man United and Chelsea could probably do with a top class additional winger. I know Chelsea have Ziyech, hudson Adoy, and Pulisic, but generally a club should always have four wingers or a club that plays a winger system should always have four wingers, in my opinion. If you look at Man United, they're in desperate uh, need for a winger. Uh, you know, maybe they'll still get Jaden Sancho, but they play Rashford. Granted, Rashford probably is a wide forward. He plays in the winger position, but he doesn't really play like a winger. But I understand how that's fine. They also play Greenwood as a winger. They don't really have a conventional winger other than maybe Dan James, maybe? God, that sounds bad. So you can kind of understand what they'd want to go in for Uzuman Dembele. The only problem is he would have had to have developed and matured as a professional footballer, you know, come into a training early, train very, very hard, don't start really late playing video games, all the basics, really. I mean, he, after his season at Dortmund, he fell off a cliff in terms of form. Remember as well, Barcelona, this was like in their Neymar money when they were trying to replace Neymar by buying like Coutinho and um, Dembele obviously and Griezmann. I don't know if Coutinho came first, but certainly all those three players are sort of trying to fill a void. They spent like 150 million euros on Ousmane Dembele, just incredible, incredible amounts of money considering his uh, lack of uh, offensive output since, you know, it's, it's really mental. But he is a young, talented player. He can be an absolute worldy, great dribbler, you know, tricky winger, and probably has a good future ahead of him. He's won the World Cup and he plays for Barcelona, so he's doing all right. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens. The rags are linking Chelsea to him. Keep it locked to Football Therapy, and I will, of course, keep you updated on any and all of these types of stories. Make sure you have the bell notification icon switched on and let's move on and talk about Frank Lampard a little bit. Now I guess this is almost going to be like a little sort of mini series here because I have to sort of look at what Chelsea's doing. Chelsea are underperforming at the moment and with that you get scrutiny on the players understandably and also the manager comes with the territory. Chelsea were in a dismal run of form, the players were playing poorly, low on confidence and also Frank Lampard had been rather uninspiring on the touchline. Now, rather than me thinking he should absolutely be sacked, I've sort of realized the sobering nature of the situation and started reflecting on potential replacements if it goes wrong. But I, like many, would love it to work with Frank Lampard and they're sort of holding out for a little bit of hope that he can turn it around. And if you think about it, Chelsea have got three wins in the last four games. If they beat Wolves, it's four wins in the last five. And that's kind of, you know, has a positive shine, especially if you look at the champions, Liverpool, that have one win in seven games. And that one win was against the Aston Villa under 23 academy. So if you think about that, it's incredible. 
you know, they played pretty well against Man United, so context is required. But it's that kind of season that's just absolutely mental. And if Chelsea can string a bunch of good results together, find some form before the Atletico Madrid game, if they beat Atletico Madrid, the season is it's just pretty much completely turned around. But I have to, honestly, I have to be really honest with myself. I think it's unlikely Frank Lampard is the coach going into next season. But that doesn't mean I don't want it. I desperately want it. I just have to sort of be objective. If he goes on a good run of form and the players start scoring again, I mean, the performance against Luton was good, and I do take positives out of it. Go watch my match review if you haven't done so yet. But we've got to do it against Wolves, who are in a bad run of form themselves, and then, you know, beat Burnley, who have, <laughs> have beaten Liverpool recently. So we, we, they, we've got to take these baby steps, and then I'll start to believe, and then Frank Lampard can instill more confidence in himself and the players. But after that, if we do get through this dip and he you know remains in the job the whole outfit Lampard Morris uh, Edwards the players everyone the whole outfit has to grow from this very difficult period and it's very testing time it's all very well getting through it and finding a bit of form but we have to believe that this was a sort of growing pain that we've moved through sure you can dip in form again look at liverpool but in terms of building the team and seeing this team play really well together at the top top highest level you have to believe that you've sort of evolved essentially anyway i'll give you sort of a linear updates of how i'm feeling about frank lampard in the job uh, I suppose every day here on Football Therapy as things progress, so keep it locked. I hope you enjoy my content. If you do, please do drop a like. It really does mean a lot. Consider subbing if you're new, my friends. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby